Shalom, Yashuala, giving all praise and glory to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to continue on the lesson, did the angels have sex with women? And are the angels the sons of the Most High? A lot of people are teaching that. You know, that, that doctrine is prevalent on this earth. We're going to find out if it's true or false. So far, you should know. But if you don't, then you're going to know. Eventually, as we go through this lesson, this will always we'll start with Colossians 3 and 17. We'll give all praise and glory to the Most High. Because it's His Word. It's not our Word. It's not my Word. It's not your Word. It's the Most High's Word. Holy men, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High, wrote these words. And what He gave us that we have here, if it's nothing but the revived version, we can go there. We're going to put, bring the Apocrypha, which is originally in the original King James 1611 Bible. The Apocrypha is in it. For all you that don't know, we can go throughout those scriptures and prove whatever. We don't need to go outside of those scriptures to prove anything. And once you know those scriptures, then you can look at anything outside of those scriptures. It's got to line up with these scriptures. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So that's why you see me going through these precepts and going into it because it's got to make sense. It's got to line up with the spirit of the most high, period. If it don't, then it's garbage. So let's go to uh, looking at the uh, a lot of where all this is coming from. When people in the New Testament, they go to the New Testament and say, see here? And try and back it up. But I've, I've covered a lot in uh, First Peter's. First Peter's, the. Uh, First Peter's, let's see. Oh. Bear with me, I'm trying to get it together. <coughs> Look at uh first Peter's the third chapter in the nineteenth verse. Let's read verse 18. For Mashiach Hoshai also has once suffered for sins. Mashiach Hoshai once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. Mashiach Hoshai being the just for the unjust, the unrighteous. That he might bring us to the Most High, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days, and ascended to the right hand side of the Most High. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. See? He went and preached to the spirits in prison. Keep that in mind. So, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So, what y'all think he went um, and went down to the... Uh, the wicked that was in prison. I mean, he was friends of public and sinners because he had to deal with teaching the sinners how to be righteous. So when you look at uh, Acts 10 and 38, you say how the Most High anointed the Mashiach Yavashai of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. This is what he did. For the Most High was with him. So he was healing those that were possessed with the devil. Look at uh, Deuteronomy 28. And... 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday, 
as the blind grope in darkness. So he said, we're going to be in a terrible shape, Yasharallah. At noonday, as the blind grope in darkness, the blind can't see. Remember, the people going to be in darkness. As we went through, the people are in gross darkness, gross ignorance. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. This is for breaking the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Hear that? We're going to be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. So this is a condition of a people, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Most High is saying, we're going to grope at noonday and be like the blind in darkness. And we're going to be only oppressed and spoiled evermore for not following the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. And no man shall save thee. Ain't no man going to save us. So y'all thinking of Mashiach Shad coming back and he's going to save us. He's going to come back as a man. Anybody that think that, you better understand Isaiah 47 and 3. Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, meaning all the wickedness going to be exposed. All the evil that are, that's being done going to be exposed. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. All the things that they're doing in sin on this earth, it's being seen. That's why the eyes of the most high upon the sinful kingdom say, I'm going to destroy from out the face of the earth. Amos 9 and 8. I will take vengeance. He coming back to judge and make war. He going to take vengeance. Listen. And I will not meet thee as a man. So ain't no man going to save us. He coming back in his angelic spiritual power. The power of the most high. To judge and make war. And bring forth righteousness on this earth. Understand this. Overstand this. So when you see. Uh, like Acts 10 and 38. Saying. How Mosai noted the Mashiach of, of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He had spiritual power from the Most High who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. See? We're oppressed of the devil. He was healing them, for the Most High was with him. He was with them. So we look at uh first Peter's. He was rolling with him. I said, that's his only begotten son. First Peter's 3 and 20. Third chapter, the 20th verse. Which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of the Most High waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. See, we are all disobedient. Except for Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives. That's what, who the Most High created. All these people that's on the earth today from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's three men and their wives. So the Most High don't need a multitude of people to create whatever he want to create. Because you make it make sense to your membrane, your, the way you think. He created everybody through Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You see, you were disobedient. Verse 19, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So you got to understand, this is, this is really dealing with, in a way, where we at now. And trying to bring our people out of prison, out of captivity. Slavery and bondage in the mind, their slave mentality, got a slave mentality. All the way from the time they programmed us in slavery to now. That's in prison. For real, you're going to see it. But you're disobedient. Titus, the third chapter, and the third verse. Titus 3 and 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. See? We as Israelites were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, lied to, until this day. 
serving diverse lust and pleasures, serving different lasciviousness, lustful desires to make us vain in the eyes of the Most High. Diverse lust and pleasures. Oh, I got to I got to feel good. And that's you know you sinning, and now you're gonna go back to the Most High. I think it's okay. It's not okay. That's why I say you got to seek Him ten times more than when He first introduced you to this truth. I think we all, that's why I look at it, I'm seeking up 10 times more while I'm dedicated to this so much that I know that everybody should be seeking up 10 times more because we were all disobedient. If you, if you weren't born in this truth and live righteously all the time of your life, you got to seek up 10 times more. But those that have come in and went away, you got to be aware, you better rebuke Satan, you better rebuke the devil, you better rebuke everything that you can that's on the left hand side because most High said he's going to send spirits. That spirit that came out of you going to get a complete number of spirits and come back in you with all these wicked spirits that's worse than the one that you that he kicked out of you. Well, how do you trust that? The only way you're going to trust that is they really give their they life to this. Dedicate their life to this. Before the Most High, because it ain't going to be worse than it was before the Most High introduced you to this truth. You better understand this. You know, I've seen people, they been in the truth, learned the truth, was able to learn all they can learn, and they left, now they jacked up. One way or another. They can stand before me and tell me that you ain't jacked up. And I'll show you how you are. Because you knew certain things, now you don't know it anymore. They took it away from you. You understood certain things, now you ain't going by this. You're going by some other way, and that's your own way. That's why I say many are deceived by their own vain opinion and evil suspicion overthrowing their judgment. The vain opinion, the vain emotions. That's emotions and feelings and all that stuff. That's why I say, listen to what it says. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, foolish, disobedient. I don't care what it say. You know, I'll deal with it later. You, you went to a Christian, back to a Christian type of mindset. Oh, the most I know my heart. I'm going I'm to I'm deal with my pleasures. How I'm a, what makes me feel good. And in the end, you're going to be sorry. Most I go make sure he deal with you because this is something that we cannot hide from. How you gonna hide from the most high and think he don't see me? Uh, he don't see me. No. His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Beholding all the ways of men. Deceive, lie to, somebody that got in your ear and lied to you. Or you don't allow Satan to come into your ear, the devil to come into your ear and lie to you. Any way you look at it. Hateful. All of a sudden you really love me. Now all of a sudden you hateful. And hating one another. And hating your brother. And hating your sister. When the most I said Jacob have I love. I'm talking to you. Yasharala. Israelites. Just talking to us. This is our, this our manual. This is our way of life. It's talking to us. First and foremost. So when you're disobedient, most that's what that's that prison that you're looking at that we caught up in. Because of disobedience. Meaning you in sin. That's what it's talking about. You transgress the laws of the most high. You say, don't do this, you do it. Do this, you don't do it. And want to justify it. Look at Isaiah. 61. Go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Just to give you an example of this prison. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is upon me because the most high have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, unto the humble, to those that are not prideful. To the Israelites. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, see? Prisons, captives. Listen, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The opening of the prison to them that are bound, the way you think. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Most High. In the day of vengeance of our power 
to comfort all that mourn. So, when you look at this, go to Luke, the fourth chapter. For my sake of shy, when he was on this earth in the flesh, he proclaimed this. Luke, the fourth chapter. And we're going to see. Mind you, when the Mosheka Shah was on the earth, there was no New Testament. He only had the law and the prophets, point blank. So when you don't believe in him and you believe in the law and the prophets from Genesis to Malachi, then you really don't know him. You don't see him in there. You say, I'll come in the volume of the book to do the will of the Most High. You don't see him as a spirit, <coughs> as the spirit of the Most High. You don't see him. That's why it's very important to understand. Look at uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, this is custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So we honored the Sabbath day, seventh day of the week, and stood up for to read. So he stood up for to read. On the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for the read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, mind you, he couldn't be given the book of Revelation, could he? Could he be given the books of Peter or James or Timothy or any of Paul's writings when he was in the flesh on the earth? No, because they did not exist. Listen. He found the place where it was written. The spirit of the most high is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And when we read it in Isaiah 61st chapter, it said to the meek, the poor, poor in spirit, the Israelites, the meek. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Most High, right? So now, when you see, let's go back to Isaiah 61, and it says in verse 1, the Spirit of the Most High is upon me, because the Most High have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. When it says the poor there, he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, where it says, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted in Luke 4 and 18. Going back to Isaiah 61. To proclaim liberty to the captives, right? Liberty to the captives, it says in Luke 4 and 18. To preach deliverance to the captives, which are the Israelites under the Roman empires rule and the opening of the prison to them that are bound right so what do you say here to set at liberty them that are bruised the same thing just worded differently but here we're looking at the opening of the prison to them that are bound here he says in Luke 4 18 to set at liberty them that are bruised. Yeah. Through your mind being in prison. To preach the acceptable year of the Most High. And he closed the book. This is Luke 4 and 20. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them. The day this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Oh, wow. Is not this Joseph's son? They didn't say Mary's son. They said Joseph's son. They didn't know. The people didn't know. It wasn't word that this is Joseph's son. Why they said that? 
So we looking at, I mean, that's another topic. <laughs> but it's, it's very important because that's going to come up within these scriptures of breakdown, particularly what they're saying here, and for you to understand certain things in the law. Very important. So, so we said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears from Isaiah 61 and 1. When he stood up and said that, so he's letting you know that he came to, that's why I say I'm the way. He's the way, the path. To show us how to follow the truth in, in St. John 14 and 6, he say I'm the way, show you how to follow the truth, which is the laws of the most High that's going to lead to everlasting life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. So if we go back to the time he's saying that, that's why a lot of people are not really spiritually understanding that there is no New Testament. When he's saying that, there's only the law and the prophets. And he's telling them things that you got to understand that they did. Those of old understood. Like you say, no mediator. He was a mediator between us and the Most High. He just became a mediator between us and the Most High. He was always there. From the beginning, in the beginning, Allah Hayyam created the heavens and the earth. Most I created all things by Allah. Masha Allah was shy. Ephesians 3 and 9. For all you New Testament buffs and you Old Testament, you understand this. You don't see him. You don't see him as a spirit. He's an angel. The first entity that the Most High made. You're going to find out he's the only begotten son as an angel that the Most High created. As a spirit that the Most High created. Period. That's it. So who's he talking to? Matthew 5, I mean, uh, Matthew 1, Who's he talking about? The meek and the poor. This was told to Mary and Joseph. Matthew 1, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Right? So he's going to save his people from their sins. Who's his people? Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's his people. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. They're the poor, they're the meek. They're the ones that's in prison. They need to be released. That's bruised, he says. That have been disobedient, been rebellious, following the way of the world, following the way of these other nations. Then, until now, don't realize that they are the chosen people of the Most High. This is what we came for. He said, You're going to say what he said in Matthew 121. Told Mary, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Right? Go to Acts 5 29. We got to make sure that you understand without a shadow of a doubt, it's not talking about everyone, it's only talking to the children of Israel. Like he said, he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Acts 5 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. And that's a problem. A lot of people following men, because men came down, came up with this doctrine. Angels came down and had sex with women as the sons of the most high. You won't find out. No, I'm asking you a question. Show me in the Bible where you see an angel, a spirit is named by, with, uh, by the son of the most high. Show me that from Genesis to Revelation. And what's I going to ask you? I'm asking you, but what's I going to ask you? As we go into this lesson, he's going to ask you that. Acts 5, 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the most high rather than men. The power of our fathers was the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you read Acts 3, 13. Raised up a Mashiach, Yavashai, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. So wicked Israelites gave him over to the wicked Romans who hung a Mashiach, Yavashai, on a tree. Him after Mosai exalted with his right hand, Mashiach Yavashai is on the right hand side of the Most High. He's talking about the Mashiach Yavashai to be a prince. Prince is the son of a king and a savior to save somebody for to give repentance to Israel, to the Israelites, 
and forgiveness of sins. There you go, your forgiveness of sins to the Israelites. Because we the ones that was given the law, statute of commandments of the Most High. We the ones that received the judgment of the Most High. Therefore, my Shekel Shai came back to this earth to die for the sins of the 12 tribes of Israel. Because sacrificing those animals, Most High wanted to be obedient. We wasn't obedient. You just heard him say we was disobedient. So he sent his only begotten son to die for the sins of wretched us, Israelites. And some of you feel like he's supposed to be come to the earth and die for you. And don't believe in no laws or nothing. Just do whatever you want to do. How you feel. That, your feeling is going to throw a whole lot of people in hell, boy. Most of us say, I'm going to melt you. Your feeling is going to get you thrown straight in the hell fire if you don't change. And become humble and have a broken and contrite spirit. But there's a balance to everything. You know, people look at, you know, it's supposed to be a certain way because of how they feel. Better get over that feeling, man. Most I have no respect to persons. My shekel ain't coming back with no, no, no. He ain't coming back as no love angel. He come back to judge and make war straight up. He showed love by coming here and dying for our sins, shedding his precious blood for us, the children of Israel. When he come back, he coming back for business. He ain't coming back for no novices either. Beginners, oh, I just wait till he come back because y'all telling teacher that all Israel shall be saved. That's a lie. All Israelites not going to be saved. One third of the Israelites going to be saved. Paul wouldn't, he wouldn't pray for that some of Israelites might be saved if all Israelites going to be saved. What's, that, what's the point of that? If every last Israelite going to be saved. Show me a scripture to show that these wicked Israelites that are blaspheming the Holy Spirit of the Most High which say they're going, they're not going to be, they're not going to be redeemed in this world. They're not going to be redeemed in the world to come. Will they come back into this world to righteous Israelites? Wicked as ever, but they're going to come back into this world as righteous Israelites. Show me, a, give me a breakdown on that. Because all mean a certain number. We know that certain number is one third of the 12 tribes of Israel. I just said the Most High created everyone on this earth through Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And their sons, their wives. You see, eight people, but three men. Come on now. Now, you, you mean to tell me, you, you see all the billions of people that's on the earth now? Did all that through three people. So you don't need, he told John, John the Baptist, I'll raise up some stones to be my people. His ways of thoughts are not our ways of thoughts. I was like, give me a breakdown on that. Because I know I've studied it, and I know within Romans 11 chapter, he said he got election, a remnant, and all that. Paul praying that some of the Israelites might be saved. Why are you going to say some of the Israelites going to be saved if all the Israelites going to be saved? And you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's, that's unforgivable in this world and the world to come. That's Israelites. That blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Understand this. Overstand this. So you see, the sins of the Israelites. That's who he came to die for. Mashiach was shot. But he don't want everybody to be saved. He don't want everybody to be saved. Or else you could open this Bible and understand it and see salvation through. It would be no parables. Why you got speaking parables? The gospel, a lot of times he was here on the earth, he spoke of parables. You know why? To fulfill what was written. Understand this and overstand this. But see, people want to make it the way they want to make it. Want to, want to, want to appease the masses to think that they're going to make it to the kingdom. They're not. That's like, oh, you can do whatever you want to do. Like you go to funerals. Oh, they going to heaven. No good world. They was wicked as ever. It ain't going to no heaven. But, oh, this is a good homecoming. Lying. So y'all doing the same thing. They feel the same way. Shoot. Like, well, I got to do what y'all doing. I'm going to be saved anyway. I heard them say that to me. I ain't got to follow what y'all follow. And I'm going to be saved anyway. I'm going to come back to the ones that make it. Look, this is proving that my Shekel Shekel don't want all Israelites to be saved, to make it to the kingdom. But he said some fell by the wayside, some fell among thorns, some fell among stony ground, some fell among good ground, right? In Mark, the fourth chapter, I'm only here to prove you to you Point blank out of Mashiach Yahweh Shai that he don't want everybody to be saved. Other Israelites. 
Mark 4 and 9. And he said unto them, He that have ears to hear, let them hear. He said, This is a lot. Everybody don't have ears to hear. He said, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. He's talking to a whole bunch of people. Like there's a whole lot of people that could hear this message. And only a few going to come and ask questions if they uncertain. Because that pride that said you won't allow you to. But some of you that really get this and really might not understand something, you're going to ask questions. So some of the multitude came with the twelve, knowing that the twelve was rolling with a Mashiach Yavashai. And asked of him the parable. Why would he speak of the parable if he wanted everybody to be saved, first and foremost? Why you got to break it down to those that came back and wanted to know more? Like some of you out there, you should be able to know Revelation, the first chapter to the 22nd chapter. Any of you hearing my voice, you should be able to know that. When you come back, you ain't come back for no novice, I'm telling y'all. You should know Daniel's the first chapter to the 12th chapter. You're supposed to know that. Because there's no excuse of you not knowing it. Any questions? Nope. So you got you know all this. And it's being written in the books. Oh no, ain't no questions asked because they know everything. They got it all down. See, that's why I applaud all those that went through what we had to go through to get this information to know what we know. Because it just, just didn't come out of the sky. Who would just coming out of the sky and twink, twinkling and all of a sudden, whoo, it just going through our minds like that. We took a lot of time to study. We had to go through these scriptures and go, I mean, day in and day out, round the clock, studying, 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 studying. You, you were, it was mandatory, point blank. And continually to do the same, as it is written. How we got to do this. So, Mark 4 and 9, and he that up, and he said unto them, He that up ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Tell us the riddle, man. Some fell by the wayside, some fell among thorns, thorns some fell among stony ground, and some fell among good ground. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery. That's something that's unknown. That's a secret. A mystery of the kingdom of the Most High. But unto them that are without, those that are without, all these things are done in parables, riddles. Speaking something, now you figure it out. What does he mean by some fell by the wayside, some fell among thorns, some fell among stony ground, and some fell among good ground? What is he talking about? That's why they, some that had uh, ears to hear came with the twelve, knowing that the twelve rolling with them to ask the question, to get the answers. He said, all these things are done in parables to those that are without. Now, we can stop there and hold that. Let's see who's without. Go to the last book of the Bible, Revelation 22 and 15. Who's without? For without are dogs. And dogs, when I look it up in the Unger's Bible Dictionary, Look up dogs. It said, for without the kingdom are dogs. So when you look up dogs, it says, in the east, it is used for impure and profane persons and was used by the Jews respecting the Gentiles. Verse uh, number five, it says, those who are shed out of the kingdom of heaven are also called dogs. Revelation 22, 15, that's where we at. On account of their vileness, probably a reference to homosexuality. That's what it's saying. Dogs. From the Unger's Bible, the new Unger's Bible dictionaries. Right? So, Revelation 22, 15. For without are dogs, those that are shut out of the kingdom, dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So if you lying, or you are you a whoremonger, you a murderer, you are a sorcerer, you are idolater, you're not going to the kingdom of heaven. You're without the kingdom of heaven. That's what it's saying. So going back to Mark, the fourth chapter. You see that? He's making it clear. So if you that, you're without. How are you going to be saved? 
How you go to the kingdom, you Israelite that's doing all those things? You're not. Mark 4 and 12. See, this is why he spoke in parables. That seeing, they may see. You might see this, the, the, excuse me, the words of this Bible and not perceive. And not perceive what it's talking about. And hearing, you might hear what this Bible is saying. They may hear and not understand. You hear, but you don't understand. Listen to what he say. Lest that any time, just any time in your life, they should be converted. You're going to be converted. And once you convert it, what happens? And their sins should be forgiven them. Hear that? So he don't want everybody to be saved. And if your sin is not forgiven you, you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. You're going to be melted. But at the same time, they're going to be welling and gnashing the teeth of my shaking, which I said. But most I got a body for you to reinvent you that you could be melted again. And the worms never die. That's what he's talking about. Don't that scare you? That's the fear of the most high. He's a consuming fire. But if you ain't looking at his fire from his loins up and his loins down, this is what he said, I'm going to melt you. His name is Jealous. So all those that are without, so I say, let you know, everybody's not going to make it to the kingdom. Don't be, don't be fooled. Thinking you can do whatever you want to do and it's okay. It ain't okay. It's say the righteous scarcely going to be saved. Scarcely. That's like by, the, by your little fingernail. Baby fingernail. Could be. Who knows? The righteous scarcely going to be saved. So it's very important to see this. Look at... Uh, Second Peter's... The second chapter and the fourth verse. Second Peter's two and four. For the most high spirit, not the angels. That sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. See, this is where, you know, you look at a lot of um, people that open up this Bible, try and bring understanding, thing that's talking about the angels, but we can go into the Apocrypha. And we can look at uh, certain things. If you look at, go, matter of fact, you go into the definition of angel, you'll see that. Uh, let me give you an example without talking. <laughs> go to uh, Second Ezra's first chapter. And verse 38 and 39. And now, brother... Behold what glory and see the people that cometh from the east. Read it again. And now, brother, behold what glory and see the people, people, like we are people. Israelites are people that cometh from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham. People, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah, Nahum, and Rebekah, Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zacharias, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Most High. Let's read verse 38 again. And now, brother, behold what glory 
and see the people that coming from the east, okay? And all these names of all these prophets and leaders that he named, including our patriarch, forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, along with the prophets, which is called also an angel of the Most High. So it tells you in Hebrews 13 and 2, Hebrews 13 and 2, which people, you know, really, in essence, should um, know because I've experienced this. Hebrews 13 and 2, remember them that are, excuse me, Hebrews 13 and 2, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. But they're strangers. But they're people that are angels. As we just read. But some have entertained angels unawares. I remember praying and I was feeding the homeless and I had ran out of money. I was like in the kitchen praying. I was, I was cooking for the people for Skid Row. And I asked the most high, you know, the allow me to continue to do this work that I want to do in helping the people. And this is a witness. And me and my brother, I imagine Allah, we was, we was taking the table out the uh, truck and it was a guy walking up, walking down the middle of the street. This is the same day that I prayed. He's walking down the street like any other homeless person that you would think that's, you know, on skid row. Walking down San Julian, rot gut. You know, most people don't go there, but it's, you know, it's hardcore. But that's where the most high sent me, so that's where I went. And he walked down the street, and he said, you're doing a good job, brother. Keep up the good work. And he gave, he reached out his hand to, give, to shake my hand, and I shook I shook his hand. And I felt something in, them, in my hand as, as he walked by. And I lost out. He gave me a dollar. Oh, that was cool, you know. And I looked at it. It was a $100 bill. I said, look, like my y'all, it's a hundred dollar bill. And we looked, and he was not nowhere to be seen. And you got the long street, you gotta, he was nowhere to be seen. With a witness. But he gave me a hundred dollar bill. Balled up, folded up in his in my hand, and for, unfolded it. And by the time I looked to see it was a hundred dollar bill, and I showed it to him, much y'all, I looked, and he was gone. Another time, uh, we were down there and the brother's like he, like he couldn't talk. Oh, I said, go get whatever you want, man. Eat whatever you want to go. Brother, I said, go ahead, man. Get clothes and the food, whatever you want. Get whatever you want. He disappeared. That's from a whole lot of people. And you had to go this way or that way. And with all these eyes, I said, where did he go? We all said, wow, where did he go? Just disappeared. Been at an at a, at a, uh, at a uh, the gas station pumping gas. And guys said, you got some money? Asked for some money. This thing I know, I looked, I looked around. He was over across the street. Same thing happened. The same thing happened at that same gas station. Somebody told me about. Don't know about what happened with me. Told me the same thing. So yeah, that's why he telling us Hebrews thirteen and two. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Somebody you don't know. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Have entertained angels unawares. So. We have to be aware of this because the most I have, most I created all things. He created everything. You see, things visible and invisible. And some things that's visible become invisible. Something that's invisible become visible. And 